The Religion of Pleasure Throughout the Old Testament, we read about a false god named Baal. Over and over again, this false god is presented. It is clear to see that there are several reasons as to why the Israelites kept turning their backs on God and would return to the worship of Baal instead. In our modern day world, we can see elements of Baal worship. There is a return of Baal worship that we are witnessing. One of the leading causes of Israel's attachment to the worship of Baal is the sexual pleasure they derived from it. Since the worship of Baal encouraged temple prostitution, it was a new religion that fostered sexual freedom among the Israelites. A suitable scriptural reference for this is Numbers chapter 25 verses 1 through 3, which records the events at Baal Peor. Numbers chapter 25 verses 1 through 3. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Baal worship is alive and well in our world today, and we can see this in our culture. We live in a world that worships at the altar of pleasure. As long as it feels good, it's fine. This is why Baal worship is so prevalent in the Old Testament. It was a religion that appealed to the flesh. It appealed to the carnal man. All the carnal flesh wants is pleasure, and the flesh is deceitful. It only wants the gratification of pleasure, but the flesh never ever reminds you of the consequences of pleasure seeking. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3, New King James Version. Among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Allow me to read this same verse using another translation. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3, New International Version. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh hand, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. And if you look at the majority of the world, most people are living to satisfy the lusts of the flesh. And this is what Baal worship catered to, the lusts of the flesh. The allure of illicit sex was rooted in Baal worship. Baal worship was rooted in sensuality and involved ritualistic prostitution in the temples. We live in an age of pleasure seekers rather than God seekers, where sexual immorality is celebrated. What is sexual immorality? The root word for immorality is pornea, meaning illicit sexual intercourse, fornication, adultery. This also includes porn and masturbation. We live in an age of eat and be merry, for tomorrow we die. The religion of pleasure is selfish. It pushes you to put your sinful desires above the well-being and future of your loved ones. Even now, we can see the statistics of marriages ending in divorce in and outside the church on the rise. We can see that less and less people are choosing to not get married. We live in an age where to fornicate or commit adultery has never been more accessible. For instance, there are now apps and websites that can show you people within 5, 10, 15, 30 mile radius of your location. 30 years ago, if someone wanted to commit adultery or fornicate, they would be limited to the people that they physically knew. Now, in the day we live in, all a person needs to do is create an account for one of these apps or websites, and they are literally presented with thousands of people to talk to. We live in an age that encourages promiscuous lifestyles. The pleasure of sin is deceptive. It will deceive you into thinking you can live a double life. You can't. You really can't. What secret pleasure do you have? What secret pleasure do you have that your husband or wife or family know nothing about? It will destroy you. Sin is deceptive. Sin is destructive. Numbers chapter 32 verse 23. Be sure your sin will find you out. Be absolutely certain 
that your sin will find you out. Quote, be sure your sin will find you out. Fall in love with your family. Put them before pleasure. Fall in love with your children. Put them before pleasure. Think about how your sin can destroy your family. Think about how your sin could cause a division in your family. Pleasure can pull you away from your responsibilities. It can pull you away from your duties as a husband or a wife. Fall in love with your husband or wife. Fall in love with your children. They are worth more than the pleasure of sin. My second point is this. Ball worship to the children of Israel provided a false sense of security. The other nations were worshiping and prospering, and this created a false security among the children of Israel. In our generation today, we are surrounded by people who live and breathe and abide in a false security. Their security is in their wealth. But as we have seen in the last week, a bank can be here and strong one minute and gone the next. There are those whose security is in their loved ones, for instance, their husband. What if that man is not around anymore? What do you do then? There are those who their security is being in a relationship. So they play musical beds, giving themselves to this person and that person. There are those who their security is in their social media followers. There are those who their security is in their intellect, in their own work ethic, in their business, in their family members in their health or their looks. All of these things are fleeting. There is no security in these things. And our Bible has a lot to say about people living under false security. Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. This rich farmer had a false sense of security. He had a false sense of security in his wealth. According to this world, this rich man is intelligent. He was wealthy. He was planning for the future. He had invested for the future and was looking ahead into the future. According to the world, he was an intelligent man. And yet God calls him, quote, you fool. He was a fool because he had a false view of both life and death. He was a fool because all he did was live in this world. He was a fool because he thought life came from the accumulation of wealth and things. He was a fool because he thought death was far. He was a fool because he lived without God and died without God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 9 verse 25, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? We live in a generation that lives in a false sense of security. And unfortunately, there are people who, just like this rich man, will hear the words, quote, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And that night where you will hear these words may be nearer to you than you could ever imagine. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. This is the day for you not to live in a false sense of security. You have no idea when your time will be, none whatsoever. What may happen to you this day or this year, only God knows. Where is your security? Jesus Christ is your security. Jesus Christ is the only one you can rest your hope and future in. For what you have in Christ is something that money cannot buy. 
What you have in Christ is something no one, no government, no demon in hell, no human being, no spiritual being can take away from you. Let your assurance be in Christ today. The religion of Baal is one that pushes people to live in a false sense of security. Just like the people who worship Baal, we are living in an era of people who are living with a false sense of security. I have paid off my mortgage. I am secure now. I have a stock portfolio. I am secure now. I have a job. I am secure. I am making and have made lots of profits. I am secure. The truth is, in this world, we own nothing. Really and truly, we don't own anything. At best, we may be stewards of something for several decades, but when we die, we can't take those things that we say we own with us. Yes, you may own the deeds of your house, but someone else owned that same house 30 years ago, and another person 30 years before that, and then another person 30 years from now. And when you die, you will no longer earn that land or home. That really puts verses like this into perspective. Job chapter 1 verse 21 And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 21 Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There is nothing wrong with owning material things or being rich, but they should not be your sense of security. Nothing outside of Christ should be your sense of security, not your job, not your relationship, not your looks or your connections or anything other than Christ. Salvation. Jesus Christ should be your own and only sense of security. Baal worship had an allure of pleasure and a false sense of security. And we can see these things taking place in our society. Let us not fall trapped to these things.